Imagine this. You're heading back to the local Pokemon Center, tired after a long day of Pokemon battling and training. The sun is set, and if you don't hurry, the Pokemon Center will lock its doors before you even get there. You're huffing and puffing back, almost there. You know that soon you'll be asleep under the protection of a roof. But then you start to hear something. Is it just your imagination, or does that sound like it's getting closer? No, it's definitely getting closer. Is it another wild Pokemon? Whatever it may be, you start to pick up the pace, walking quicker. Your hand is at the ready on your Pokemon partner's Pokeball. You're so close to the center now, but the noise is just getting louder and louder. Hello, hello everybody. I'm Missy Doopop, but you can call me Missy if you'd like. How was that intro, huh? I promise those glowing eyes will be explained by the end of the video. Oh, I love a good video intro. You know what else I love? The way YouTube brings people together. People of all kinds of beliefs, backgrounds, all into one place. There's so many different communities. Community I've been finding myself in as of late is the Fakemon community. It's such a widespread community, with people making Fakemon everywhere, and even their own regions. Their own stories, their own gimmicks, all of it. It's incredible how creative this community is, even though we're all so different. Some of us Fakemon making YouTubers wanted to showcase all of this diversity with this year's Fakemon Ultra Collab with the theme Cryptids. Now, what exactly do cryptids have to do with Pokemon and Fakemon being found all over the world? Well, cryptids, creatures that have been claimed to exist but never yet proven, are also found all over the world. From Scotland's Nessie to the US's Chupacabra to Nepal's Yeti. But that only brushes the surface of cryptids, the tip of the iceberg. We took it upon ourselves to create the ultimate collab, making not only a video but a series of videos, turning cryptids from our home countries into Pokemon. I'll be sure to leave a link to all of the participants' videos down below in the description and if you want to give this challenge a try, feel free. It's open to anyone who wants to give it a go, but I'll be giving some details later in the video. Here's the timestamp. But right now, I really want to start talking about the cryptid I chose, Mothman. Mothman is a US cryptid, a fellow American I see, <laughs> that originated in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. This man-sized, red-eyed mothbird was first spotted on November 12, 1966. One member from a group of grave diggers working late into the night claimed that he saw, quote, a brown human being fly right over their heads, end quote. And only three days later, on November 15th, two couples reported to the police that they had spotted a large gray creature of sorts, with white wings and glowing red eyes. It was standing right in front of the car they were all riding in, and they stated that it chased them as they tried to drive away. I would be downright terrified. Of course, when the newspaper released this story the next day, people were skeptical. It's hard to believe that a giant man with wings is tormenting random couples. But for the next few days, more and more sightings were reported. It seemed people couldn't quite agree on the color of this creature, spanning from brown to gray to black, but everyone agreed that this creature had wings and giant glowing red eyes. And Noelle Partridge, that is a hard word for me to say, suspected that this creature was with a 10-foot wingspan may have had something to do with the disappearance of his dog. According to a newspaper article released on November 18th, 1966, Noel said he sighted the thing in a meadow near his home in Doddridge County, about 50 minutes before the Point Pleasant sightings. He said his television set began acting like a generator, and Bandit, I assume his dog, started carrying on something terrible. He said he shined a flashlight into the field and saw something with eyes that looked like red reflectors. It stated that the dog's hair stood straight up and the animal went into the field. It's also stated that the dog never returned. Not everyone was so quick to believe these stories of a crazy creature that stole dogs and chased cars, though. Mason County Sheriff George Johnson stated that he suspected the sightings were that of a large shite poke, also known as a larger member of the Heron family, a bird that could definitely not fly at 100 miles per hour, the speeds that Mothman had been flying, at least according to the previously mentioned duo of couples. It didn't take long for a wildlife biologist from the University of West Virginia to come up with another bird theory. Robert L. Smith reported that the 
descriptions that were being given sounded like the descriptions of a sandhill crane. These cranes typically range from three to four feet tall, with wingspans of around six to seven feet. Smith hypothesized that the bird had lost its way during migration and ended up in West Virginia. Because Point Pleasant citizens had most likely never seen a sandhill crane, it may have been unfamiliar to them. This would have led many people to jump to the conclusion that this bird might be a monster of the night, especially with the red flesh this bird has around its eyes, which when blurred and looked at with merely a flashlight or car headlights could easily be mistaken for reflective eyes. This theory really checks out, as most of the first Mothman sightings have described the creature as a bird-like giant. The only problem with this theory is that the Sandhill Crane only reaches flying speeds of around 35 miles per hour, nowhere near the 100 miles per hour that the couples claim to have been chased by. Were they just exaggerating, caught up in the heat of the moment, spooking themselves and mixing details up? And what about Partridge's missing dog? The generator-like TV static? Well, coincidences are a thing. His dog could have merely ran off, gotten lost in the night, and couldn't have found its way home. And TV static isn't necessarily an uncommon occurrence, especially back in the 1960s. There's much more to Mothman's story, like its supposed connections to the collapse of the Silver Bridge, a collapse that took 46 lives, or the many other theories that people believe, like a prankster who just took it too far, or the after effects of World War II. But I'm willing to bet that the majority of you are here to see me make a fake -a and are patiently waiting for this story to wrap itself up. If you'd like to see me dig deeper into Mothman's story, or any other cryptid, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section, as the research for this video was a lot of fun. But after all this research, I was starting to get some concept ideas for the fake -a what if I turn the Mothman legend into a two-stage bug-slash-dark type Pokemon, taking inspirations from the symbolisms of certain moths and trickery? What if I take this idea of people potentially jumping to conclusions about a heron, thinking it's a giant man-beast, and turn it into something a little more Pokemon-y? Maybe a harmless moth Pokemon who many just assume is out for blood, wanting to cause them harm, when really it's just a curious and lost Pokemon. I started looking into moths found in North America, calling back to the whole prompt of this video, the diversity of creators. And similar to the Fakemon community, moths are found pretty much worldwide, even in the Arctic Poles. But I specifically wanted to choose a moth that is found in North America, just like me. I wanted this first stage to be a moth larva, and save the moth I came across for the final evolution. But this has been more than enough talking and planning. I'd like to introduce you all to Marva. Marva's name is a combination of the words, I bet you'll never guess, moth and larva. The name is definitely in the workshopping stage, so if you have any other ideas Ideas, I'd love to see them down below in the comment section. Without spoiling too much about its final evolution, the moth I'm taking inspiration from is a black colored moth. Though black moths are still common, they're rarer than their light colored counterparts. Similar to how it's rare to come across Mothman. Is that too much of a stretch? I don't know. The color black is typically associated with things like death and darkness. So I made Marva's face resemble a simplified skull shape with sockets for those big red reflective eyes that so many claimed Mothman has. I wanted this baby to look a Approachable, even though it can appear scary at first. So I tried to make the design look not only friendly, but fluffy too. And feathery. Many moths have feathered antennae. The antennae that moths have not only help them navigate and smell the world around them, but help them balance during flight too. When these antennae are feathered, it gives them a stronger sense of smell. I thought the feathered looking antennae would be perfect to include in the design, taking inspiration from the bird-like appearance that the first Mothman spotters described. And it also references the fact that these moth-looking, night-loving creatures could possibly have been a lost heron. Many assume that Marva is standoffish, but really, it's just shy. They like to live together in groups, using the illusion of their big red eyes to trick predators into thinking they're a giant beast. It's a bug dark type, which is an unused type combo with a lot of potential. So, what do you think of Marva? Does it get the messages of DEATH AND DARKNESS across without being too dark? Let me know down below in the comments. But now, let's look at Marva's evolution, Motherata. This name is a combination of moth, coming from Mothman, and the word Odorata, coming from the scientific name of the Black Witch Moth. That's the moth that Marva and Motherata take inspiration from, the Black Witch Moth. This moth is one of the largest moths found in North America, with a wingspan of about 9 inches. This moth really just screamed Mothman to me, especially after I learned that in many places around North America, this moth is associated with death or misfortune. Though in some places, it does have a happier meaning. In Hawaii, it is thought that if a loved one has just died and you see a black witch moth, that means that the soul of your loved one has returned to say goodbye. Very bittersweet. But from my research, I've gathered that most believe this moth to be a sign of bad omens to come, which I thought fit perfectly for a scary cryptid-based fake -a -mon. I love the idea of this fake -a -mon looking like it's wrapped up 
up in a cloak, almost vampire-like. I'm thinking that Matharata is a lot like Absol, in the way that many associate or blame it for bad things happening. Just like the symbolism of the Black Witch Moth, it is thought that when you see a wild Matharata, bad things will happen soon. But this isn't really the case. Matharata just wants to make friends, but is a little too scary looking for the young trainers. This causes Matharata to keep to itself, making itself rare to find. By wrapping itself up in wings like this, it's easier to hide in the shadows of forests. But I think you'll be glad to hear that once the sun sets and many have gone to bed, it feels more comfortable. It basks in the moonlight, feeding on the energy. And once it gets enough, it changes form. This is Nightfall Matharata. It feels comfortable enough to open up its wings and take off to the sky. Now that its wings are spread open, you can more easily see the bone hands, similar to its bone face, and the wing patterns. I had an idea with these red spots here. I tried to make them look like eyes, so when light reflects off the spots, they look like two pairs of eyes, making the threat to predator bird Pokemon appear even larger. That's what you saw at the beginning of this video. Not only Amatharada's eyes, but its wing spots. And its feather antennae. It's a lot bigger and fuller now, and bright red. The gray of the daytime form helps it blend into surroundings better, but the red of the nightfall form helps it stand out to its fellow Amatharada friends. Another couple of markings you may notice are these spots on the lower wings. The black witch moth has an interesting spot on its upper set of wings. A mark that looks like a comma or maybe a nine. I wanted to reference this in my Fakemon design without straight up just adding a comma mark. Looking at you, Hisuian Quillfish Evolution, with your little Q. Oh, you're so funny. And that's all I have to share about Marva and Matharata. But don't go anywhere yet. Like I said earlier in the video, if anybody watching wants to give this Fakemon challenge a go, you're totally invited to. All you have to do is create a Fakemon based on a cryptid of your choice and use the hashtag Fakemon Ultra Collab 2022. Me and a couple of my fellow Fakemon creating YouTubers chose cryptids from our home country, but if you'd like to keep your home country private and still make a Fakemon for this challenge, then I recommend just choosing a favorite cryptid instead. A personal favorite of mine is the Loch Ness Monster. I can't wait to see everybody's go at this tag challenge. I'll do my best to watch all of the videos and comment, you know, support them, and I encourage you guys to go do the same. And again, that tag is hashtag Fakemon Ultra Collab 2022. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and these designs. I learned a lot about Mothman. I only went into this prompt knowing that Mothman was a big giant moth man. And now I've learned that there's a lot more to the story. Like I said earlier in the video, if you'd like me to make another video about a cryptid, I would love to. Marva and Matharata were a lot of fun to make, and I hope you enjoyed watching me make them. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to let me and others know by giving it a like. This helps me fight against the mighty YouTube algorithm. And while you're down there, feel free to click the subscribe button. We are slowly working our way to 1,000 subscribers, and I am so excited. With that, it's time for me to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time. This is Missy Doopop, signing off.